Okay, yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to start with saying, um, if you haven't heard about the, the mappings task group, you are forgiven, but um, given that it's been mentioned a couple of times in particular, like three minutes ago, I'm going to skip over that. Um, so the TEDVIC mappings task group is officially not a task group yet. It's in formation, um, but I still wanna outline what we've done so far and what we are going to do in the future. So um, since all of you are here in this session, uh, I think you are aware of the general problems uh, regarding standards mapping. So um, within Tedwick, we don't have a common way of expressing how standards relate to each other and what terms map to which other terms. And there are several standards who don't have any mappings attached to them. And those that do have mappings, um, well, they are sometimes hard to find, uh, and each standard uses a different way to express those mappings. Um, so those were some issues that uh, we noticed and discussed a couple of times at last year's TEDWIC in Sofia, uh, which led to the idea to have a session in the, the uh, or discussion in the unconference session about this. And um, yeah, this actually had quite a good turnout. We were the biggest breakout group within the unconference session and well, people started discussing about mappings and um, we continued that discussion in the channel and at the Tetwick Slack uh, space. Um, and then from there on, uh, yeah, uh, we, we continued and um, then we had a meeting with the technical architecture group, the TAC, uh, Again, people recognize that this is an issue uh, and yeah, we should do something more about this. And so there were two dedicated meetings just from our group, all digital. Um, and uh, yeah, within those meetings, the idea was formed to make this like a proper task group within TEDWIC under the umbrella of the TAC. Um, and for those who are familiar with the TEDWIC bylaws, well, a task group needs to have an official task, something to work towards, and maybe eventually after the task has been achieved to dissolve. And so the task for our group would be to come up with a recommendation for the tech on how Tedric standards should document the mappings. And for that, we want to look at both the human readable versions as well as the machine readable expressions of those standards. Um, and we want to have it be compatible to the existing standards documentation standard, the document that outlines how TEDRIC standards should be documented, as the name implies. Um, but we also want to give recommendations for tools and workflows to standard authors and standard maintainers on how to create those mappings and also maintain them. Maybe have uh, some integration in the, the Python scripts uh, provided by Steve Baskov that generate the documentation pages for standards. Not all of the standards are using them, but uh, if we were able to do that, that would make it really easy for the workflow uh, so that standard maintainers would have their files and that script creates both the machine readable and the human readable outputs. Um, one thing I forgot to mention here on the slides was that uh, the tag also gave us uh, a task even before we are officially formed, because in the tag there was also the uh, discussion on um, yeah how to um, or to, to come up with a recommendation at which points a standard should uh, adopt a term from an external vocabulary versus creating their own, and there. Are, advantages and disadvantages for both. And there is, at some point, there, there's a line to say, okay, in that case, it should be good to uh, you just take the term as it is and use it in your standard, or to create a similar term and do a mapping for it. And so this has been um, on the task list of the tag for quite a while, and we haven't really gotten around to it. And so the tag just gave us this task as well, since it's so related to mappings. Um, but how do we get to those goals? Well, first of all, we should establish the task group itself. Uh, for that, we need a charter. We have a draft on that, uh, but it's not quite finished yet. So we hope to get to it in the uh, workshop that's coming up. Um, and we need to 
get more people to join in. And looking at the crowd here, who are obviously interested in standard mappings, uh, I think that's that's a good uh, thing. So uh, you're all welcome to to join. I'm getting to this a little later, and then we need to assess what are the current mappings that we already have. Um, maybe we might send around a survey to the standard creators, like which mappings do you already have? How are they documented? How did you create them? Uh, how much of your standard space is mapped out? Um, and we want to evaluate the different ways of expressing mappings and their advantages and disadvantages. So one of the ones that has been come up over and over again and also mentioned at least twice here uh, today was is the SSSOM uh, standard. Um, maybe this could be a potential candidate for a recommendation. And now, if you've uh, heard about this and says, hey, say, that is an interesting topic, uh, I want to contribute. Well, um, first of all, thank you, and you're really welcome. The easiest way uh, to start is by joining the workshop that's going to start in about half an hour over in Marina. And um, then, as I mentioned, we have the channel Mappings Between Standards in the Tedwig Slack space. Uh, just be aware, it, I'm not talking about the channel about this discussion right here, but the one in the general uh, Tedwig Slack. So the one that is not connected to this particular conference. Uh, you can come to the next meetings. Um, the next one is probably going to be in November during the Tedwig Working Sessions Week. There's not a fixed date for that yet, uh, but once we have it, we will communicate it in the Slack channel. Um, if you are a standard creator and have done mappings, just tell us about it. This, kind of information exchange and knowing what has been done and how was it done is, is really valuable for us. Um, if you are more graphically inclined, at least more than I am, as you can see, those slides are really plain, or, uh, uh, just create some, some, some nice graphics and visualizations it could also be really helpful just to, to make the topic more appealing. Um, a bit of self-interest to put that on there. Or just, yeah, you know your strengths and uh, I'm pretty sure we can find a way for you to bring those strengths into our task group. Well, then uh, lastly, I would like to acknowledge all the people, particularly my two co Host co moderators today, uh, Holly and Maralke, and all of the people who come to the previous meetings of uh, our group and the people who contributed at the breakout session last year. Thank you very much. And we have a couple of more times now for questions for all of them, not so many. So um, if you have any questions for any of the uh, other speakers, just yeah, raise your hand. Do we have a microphone here for the room? Yeah, we, we have one over here. So I see no question here in the room. So maybe then we can uh, use an que online question. Where's Holly gone? <laughs> Um, so there is a question to the geologic time scale um, presentation. I may be misunderstanding the granularity of the goal here, but why is the text like Jurassic treated as a syntax error for Jurassic? Uh, can it be treated as uh, showing less precision and therefore a wider range of years? Um, so is, I'm not sure if, if Susan is still online. If if she is, could we give her the speaking rights? Yes. So maybe Ben can answer this one. If he wants to. Yeah, so um, 
Okay. Okay, so can okay. Ben answer that then? I ben, can you speak up? Uh, could be that he's answering it in the Slack. How about now? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? No? <laughs> yeah. Great, we hear you. Can you really? Oh, that's great. <laughs> um, can you repeat the question one more? Are, Repeat the question one more time. Okay, I have it right here. Um, so from Michael Horton, um, okay. I may be misunderstanding the granularity of the goal here, but why is text like Jurassic question mark, all in parentheses, so the question mark being part of the label, treated yes. as a syntax error for Jurassic? Um, can it be treated as showing less precision and therefore a wider range of years? I don't think so. I, I I do take your point that it it does have some more meaning where you could have that, but not. It's um, there's no way to systematically do that. So I mean, it's just sort of like a we think so kind of thing. And so the idea is that you keep the question mark or not, and the decision is that you would keep the question mark in sort of verbatim value, but it maps to the actual term Jurassic, and you remove any special characters. But you also preserve the verbatim value. Make sure you make note of that. But in itself, there's no real systematic way to broaden the time interval Jurassic represents. OK, sure. I hope that answers the question from Michael. I think we have question for, time for one more question in the room. Oh. Oh, oh, Holly wants to add something. Um, just going to add to Ben's answer a little bit. This is something that we're continuing to work on um, and refine. Susan's work was really awesome within the parameters of what we were able to do with that vocabulary for that project. Um, but for figuring out some of those nuances, particularly with modifiers like a question mark or the lower, upper, early, late, um, those are things we're still going to be talking about. So if you're particularly interested in the vocabulary for geologic time, uh, get in contact with us. Well, thank you. So I think the time of our session is up. And since they're already putting out the the snacks here in the back. I'm assuming that the people from the other sessions are going to flood in here pretty soon. But I would like to invite everybody. There were already some discussions in Slack. So for those sitting here in the room, just to follow. And some of the questions were already answered there. So yeah. just have a look there. And we are looking forward to see you in Marina yeah. in half an hour. Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers and to all of the audiences and all of the online participants as well. Mm -hmm.